I'm Major General Ulysses S. Grant, and I send you my greetings there in Charleston, Missouri. I also send you my regrets that I cannot be with you here on July the 9th. I am in Vicksburg, Mississippi, where just a few days ago on the 4th of July, I took the surrender of General Pemberton and his army of some 30,000 men. So I cannot be with you this day, but I congratulate you and send my compliments that you are there learning about the Battle of Belmont and environs. The Battle of Belmont is, is of great import to me for a number of reasons. First of all, it is the battle, my first battle that I fought where I was the commanding officer, no one to turn to. I had been in a number of battles in the Mexican War but Belmont was the first one where I had no one to turn to. I was in command. Belmont also is significant to me because uh, I narrowly escaped uh, harm or danger on uh, more than one occasion during that four hour battle. I had a horse shot out from under me and uh, fortunately was not hurt when the animal went down and accommodating, I believe, Lieutenant offered me his horse and I was able to finish the fight on that. After we had fought our way back to the boats uh, through heavy Confederate forces that had come across the river uh, to reinforce the Confederates that we'd initially beaten back out of their camps and uh, thought we'd won the battle, my men did, I did not. Uh, I got back to the boats with the men and I noticed that we didn't have federal naval support, I had not ordered them to uh, give us support and place themselves, their gunboats, between us and, and uh, the forces in Columbus, Kentucky. And I also had left a colonel with a regiment on the riverbank uh, south of our landing and uh, with orders to stay there until he had orders to come back. And I uh, skedaddled down there to relieve him, rushing off with no escort. I learned to take an escort with me because when I got to the location where I left him, he'd already left. He skedaddled. Uh, we had some words about that later. But when I was there, <clears throat> I found myself with a substantial number of Confederate troops between myself and the boats. And I tried being, I had a, a very casual in, uh, demeanor. I had an old faded great coat on and of course it was infantry federal blue. And I tried walking my horse through the cornfield there and uh, hoping not to be seen. Well, one of the Confederate officers saw me and pointed at me and yelled, yonder goes a Yankee boys, practice your marksmanship on him. And I immediately put the spurs to my horse and galloped away. Not a single soldier raised a musket at me and I was no more than 50 yards away. When I got to the boats, the Bell Memphis was my boat. They were backing away. Uh, remember, this is the first battle for everybody, virtually everyone involved, Army and the vessels that had brought us down river. And uh, the captains were all anxious to get away from that scene. Well, my captain saw me coming, cut the engines, uh, didn't come back, he just cut the engines and ran out the gangplank. My horse, uh, seemed to sense the urgency of the moment, and he slid down an almost vertical uh, embankment. The river was at its lowest point anyone could ever remember because it had been the driest summer anyone could remember. And yet he went down the embankment and ran up that gangplank, as difficult as it is to believe a horse ran over a gangplank. But he did, and uh, I was safely back on the boat. But that doesn't end the issue for why the battle is important to me. I went up uh, to the pilot house, to the captain's cabin, which was immediately behind it. I laid in the bunk to rest myself and I heard firing outside, uh, substantial musket fire, and I got up to go see what it was. And it was just feder uh, Confederate troops on the riverbank firing down as we pulled away. No one was hurt as I recall. And I went back to the captain's cabin and saw that there was a uh, hole in the bulkhead, as he called it. I'd call it a wall, 
but there was a, a hole where a ball had gone through where my head would have been had I not gotten up to go outside and see what the disturbance was about. So uh, for that reason as well, the Battle of Belmont is of great significance to me. And the criticism I get is that uh, it's really a battle people say that shouldn't have been fought because I had orders to conduct a, a diversion uh, in the area from my commander, Major General Fremont. And uh, when I got to the Belmont area, I saw the situation and uh, felt that I should engage the enemy because they were sending troops across the river from Columbus, Kentucky to go inland and uh, uh, pursue federal troops that I had sent Major I mean, uh, Colonel Richard Oglesby and about 3,000 troops. And I felt that with Leonidas Polk and Gideon Pillow, coming in behind Oglesby from the river going to the west, that Oglesby would be caught trapped and those men would be lost and I could not abide that. So I went in to uh, combat those Confederate forces and protect Colonel Richard Oglesby and his 3,000 men. So, uh, and I had told uh, General Fremont, if I don't hear anything to the contrary, I will attack. Well, I didn't hear anything to the contrary and I did attack. Uh, I am criticized that I lost the battle. I did not. I accomplished all of the objectives that I had and got my men out safely. And I accomplished another more substantial goal. I gave my men combat experience. Most of those men had not seen the elephant. Well, they did at the Battle of Belmont in November. So I welcome you. And I congratulate you and send my compliments. You are learning about the war and what happened, and you're being able to walk the ground, which is of great import. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your history. Thank you for being here this day.